My name is Joe Compton. I am an independent author and filmmaker and the executive producer here at Go Indie Now. I may know a lot of things, but that's because I never stop learning. I figured I wasn't alone in that. So I asked my friends and colleagues if they wouldn't mind giving us an hour of their time to each teach us something new. So, welcome to Indie Teachables 101, brought to you by the Speculative Fiction Academy. Like vampires and ghouls? Superheroes and androids? Want to learn how to write them? The Speculative Fiction Academy is perfect for you. With five curriculum tracks and three ways to learn, you'll go beyond the fundamentals to hone your craft. Visit speculativefictionacademy.com to learn more. Tonight we welcome Diane Morrison. Diane is a speculative fiction author who writes The Wide West Chronicles and The Toy Soldier Saga. She has a Twitch channel called Sable Aradia, which currently has 872 followers. And if you hadn't guessed, yes, tonight, Diane is going to show us and teach us a little bit about Twitch. Launched in 2011, Twitch is a video streaming platform where millions of people come together live every day to chat, interact, and make their own entertainment together. It has become an independent author haven and a staple in the independent artist community. So, we welcome Diane Morrison to teach us more about how we can benefit by using Twitch. And we are live, and yes, there she is. Uh, <laughs> Hello, <real> everyone. <laughs> we're real excited to uh, talk about this, and uh, yeah, this is actually something she brought to me. So this was uh, this is perfect for what we were do, planning to do with this show. So I, I invited her in, and uh, yeah, we're we're uh, hey, everybody's saying hello, and welcome, <laughs> hello, <laughs> hi Eli. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, Eli's another Twitch streamer and writer. So nice. yeah, awesome. Uh, I, you know, you, to kind of give everybody kind of an, a starting point here. Uh, so w when did you realize that Twitch was a viable source for you? And when did you kind of bring yourself onto that platform and kind of concentrate on that platform? And to be honest, it was a total accident. Um, <laughs> in, uh, okay, when the pandemic hit, uh, we couldn't play our D&D &D game at home anymore. So we thought, okay, well, since we're going to have to meet online anyway, People are streaming games all over the place. Maybe it'll, it takes place in my universe of the Toy Soldier Saga. Maybe it'll get some attention for the for the universe, right? So yeah. we started streaming our game live, and we found that there's actually quite a few writer communities on Twitch, and they kind of operate like this, but they're starting to overlap because <laughs> we're starting to bring them together. So, um, And then I realized, hey, people are actually writing live, and I thought, who would want to watch me write? You know, <laughs> but I couldn't get it. But then, but then I watched a couple of these streams, and I realized that basically it's a write-in. It's like mm -hmm. if you go to NaNoWriMo's channel during their events, and they do like live write-in. It's like that, only twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, with people that you get to know. 
And that I figured I could do. And it kind of blew up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is a, a viable community that is really strong. I mean, the, you know, Twitch has always been known for that side of what you talked about, how you got there the gaming right. aspect of it and you know i re i got introduced to twitch through critical role on on uh, nerdist and and geek and yep. sundry and and they kind of brought me to that and then you realize that people are playing video games on there and that that's become really popular too and but there's this whole other side of the talk show element of it and the podcasting element that is almost really taking taking twitch over i mean it's 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 almost tilting a lot toward that edge of it. And, you know, did you find right away that that that, that was a really cool, inclusive spot you could, oh, yeah. you could niche into? Yeah, I mean, Twitch can have a reputation for being negative in a mm -hmm. lot of places. It can be in the video gaming community. I have seen that. But mm -hmm. in general, the writer community, nothing like that at all. Um, one of the... I, I got... Uh, We'll talk about what the terms mean later, but I got affiliate fairly quickly. And one of the reasons why is that when I started streaming under the writing tag, the Twitch Writers Network came in en masse and started following me. Mm. Right. So and then um, I was involved with World Anvil through um, I put my stuff out there. It's kind of a wiki for my world. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole community that came over from there, too. And yeah, it uh, it grew from there. And you know, there, there's a couple of exceptions, but mostly people were there to help each other, right? And support mm -hmm. each other. Well, it's a natural fit because Amazon is the owner of the of the streaming service, right? So it's yeah. kind of like, you know, I mean, we all have our opinions of the evils on and, and how it goes for us. And especially if we're independent, we have a very strong opinion about it. But <laughs> it seems like it seems like they don't they don't monitor it like you know they don't gatekeep it like you know th they do in some instances with with some of the things that do on their own site so it's kind of nice that there is this kind of independence to it yeah definitely yeah they they don't really monitor it much just follow their terms of service they're pretty straightforward if you're gonna do a lot of mature content mark yourself as a mature channel i do because i swear <laughs> <laughs> a lot <laughs> and, you're, and you're welcome to swear here i'm a mature channel okay. as well so cool you're good cool. you're good uh so let's let's kind of give everybody an idea of how to get started with Twitch. If you're a new writer, if you're somebody out there, I know that's going to be for a lot of people in this chat and watching now, it's going to be redundant, but to give some people some idea of how this all begins and, and how to get started with making their own Twitch and, and then connecting to the writing community in that respect. Sure. Okay. So honestly, I generally suggest that people start with their built-in software Twitch studio. That's mm -hmm. what I started with. It's got all the basic stuff in there. It does everything that you're going to need it to do for the most part. Um, I got frustrated with it eventually because I started doing really elaborate things with my scenes and it was <laughs> just eating too much memory. But, you know, I mean, if you're going to do a write-in like this or a talk show, yeah, it's 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 got everything you need. So you just sign up for a Twitch account, right? And you uh, head in to read their um, Creator Academy stuff. They've got all kinds of information. They'll tell you how to set up. They'll you know tell you what what you need to get started and what you need to uh, make it a viable commercial source, which I know is something that a lot of people in your audience will be interested in. So yeah, absolutely. Um, you have to have a certain number of followers before they will give you ad revenue. It's uh, 50 followers. You have to have an average of three viewers per stream and you have to have streamed a certain number of hours, right? So stream mm -hmm. on a fairly regular basis. And then um, it, it doesn't take long. Once you can connect with the community, you'll reach affiliate status and then you can start making money from there and you can do things like have channel point rewards, which lets your viewers interact with you more directly and either get you to do stuff or, you know, <laughs> influence your game. If you're doing role playing games or make you get up and take a stretch, you know, <laughs> or drink some water, very common right. rewards on writing streams. Yeah. yeah, hydrate for a hundred yep. bits, right? <laughs> That's it, exactly. And I, it's very helpful. I forget. I get involved in what I'm doing. 
<laughs> <laughs> so what are some of the things you can do on there to that you would suggest people start with? Is it write-ins? Is that the most common thing? Do you feel like there's, you know, podcasting, where, 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 interviews, where, where do you think people, is it just a natural thing wherever they feel comfortable? Where, what do you think about how they might be able to connect to the writing community quicker? I think that, um, okay, generally, if you stream under the writing tag and you do writing, that probably is going to be how you're going to connect the fastest. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of things that you can do to reach out. Um, I think Twitch does really well for people like you and I who try to be who we are and we don't like a lot of, you know, nonsense around it. I have had a mm. YouTube channel for a long time. I cannot be bothered to put in the kind of editing that's required. <laughs> it just takes too much time away from the writing for me. Right, so sure. uh, an, a forum like this where you can directly interact with people, I, I like that much better. And um so yeah, so do what you're good at, right? Like if yeah. you have familiarity with podcasting, I do live podcasts on my channel as well. I'm part, I'm one of the hosts of a podcast called If This Goes On, Don't Panic, which is a science fiction and fantasy hope punk podcast. We do live episodes um, every now and then. We're planning on doing it more regularly now every three months. We do those on my channel. Um, I do, there's, there's also events. Right. And I guess I should probably get into discussing that. One way you can yeah. really connect to the community is get involved with or start some events. Hail Hydrate. Thank you, Eli. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so um, one of the things th that uh, helped grow my channel, I think, was that I had this idea for a writing event to go on during National Novel Writing Month. And I'm not gonna, like, I could spend the whole episode talking about just that. It's called The Game of Tomes. It's uh, basically, it turns writing into a team sport. Pick a house, write with them. Your word counts are counted cumulatively. We score it with channel points. Um, the winner gets bragging rights. Um, we do it three times a year. We do, uh, you know, during November, it's the the um, conceit is that it's a war. There's an undead horde. There's eliminations, right? During the tourney months, the tourney of tales, which are April and July, the camp NaNoWriMo months, it's more of a tournament. So the vibe is more Dunkin' Egg as opposed to Game <laughs> of Thrones, right? And so that's coming up right away, right? Yeah. I brought my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked a bunch of people, writers that I knew who were also streamers in the community, hey, would you like to help me with this? And it uh, it kind of exploded. <laughs> it got so big so fast, I could hardly keep up with it. I mm. guess people really wanted that kind of community and connection. So, mm. um, so that's one thing that you can get involved in, right? Or come up with your own idea. Another thing mm. coming up is uh, Conduit. Writer's Conduit is a completely on Twitch for free conference that takes place in the end of uh, end of June. I think it's the twenty fourth to twenty sixth this correct, year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And um, I'm one of the organizers for that, too. And um, it, it's great. It's like every writing conference you've ever been to, except that it's all grassroots community organized. It's, you know, us. It's writers in the Twitch community, most of whom are indies, mm -hmm. who, you know, are just getting together, sharing like this, right? Sharing mm -hmm. what we know, maybe helping out other people answering questions it's it's a lot of fun and it, and it encompasses all sorts of writing not just not just oh, fictional yeah. writing i mean there is a lot of there's a lot of genre talk and a lot of things like that but it also i did a lot of screenwriting panels for that yes. last year and, and and there's a lot of those as well so if you're it, it's doesn't it, it's very inclusive uh, to all types of writing so and i know that there was talk of more poetry was, was kind of the talk and the chatter and the discord a little bit and things like that. So yeah, it's really 
blossomed with with all sorts of right it's like a writer's conference really <laughs> well exactly <laughs> yeah i've agreed to do a lyrics writing panel mm -hmm. so that's going to be one of the things that's happening i know that um i wish i could remember her name off the top of my head but she's a mystery writer and she's going to be doing mystery writing panels like cool. yeah everybody you can find you can find everything and um yeah, I'll, I guess I should probably, I don't know, give you the information afterwards so I'm not mm -hmm. just like, you know, rattling mm -hmm. off websites right now in the middle of a conversation. But yeah. yeah, someone was talking about a math panel. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah and uh, math like and literature. Le yeah. Legit legal panel. So, ah, yeah. That's, that's, that's cool. Yeah. Great. I'd love to see it. Yeah. That would be interesting for sure. I mean, Anytime you get that kind of legalities is kind of one of those things that you have to really know. So it's like you have to be an expert to, to kind of. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, we need a legit lit legal panel for sure. Yeah, I think that's yeah. I think that would be cool. So uh, and they're taking suggestions. I was just talking to Diana off the air about it. And yeah, they're taking suggestions. So if you guys got a suggestion, go go sign up and put it out there for them. So Yeah, let me see panel. here if I can find there's a, a sign up for the. I wish Sarah were here. She always has that mm -hmm. handy, but there's um, a link to sign up to do a panel. If you want, mm -hmm. you know, come present an idea to us. And, you know, if uh, we don't already have something, we'd love to have it. And uh, if we do have something that's like that, we'll match you up with someone who might want to, you know, do that with you. Right. We've also yeah. got uh, what we call chill and chat events. Mm -hmm. And these are just, you know, kind of a more laid back stream where you can go hang out, you know, rest between panels, socialize mm -hmm. with other people in the chat who are also writers. There we go. I found it. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, just kind of chill. Right. So mm -hmm. we've got that going on. There's uh, there's a form if you want to sign up for panel. Um, we also have a form if you want to sign up. Why do I keep clicking on the wrong thing? Okay. Um if you want to sign up to do um, a chill and chat, and that is... Ooh, I put it in the wrong thing myself, so... <laughs> Hang, on. <laughs> Hang on, everybody. I got it. <laughs> that is here. <laughs> yep. Oops. All right. There we go. And uh, if you want to know more about the Game of Tomes or and or the Tourney of Tales, um, it's Madness. There's a plot line and a fictional universe there's that's co-created right like it's mm -hmm. a collaborative effort mm -hmm. that everybody contributes to in order to make it what it is right there are um filk and parody songs that people <laughs> do mm. the creativity is kind of ludicrous it, it's it's just insane and if you want to know more about that we'd mm -hmm. love to have you come play it's just gameoftones.org and i will put that therapy and once i learn how to type again apparently but <laughs> <laughs> nice awesome i missed yeah. the question that appeared on the on the screen unfortunately oh it wasn't a question it was a it was a comment from eli he said uh, don't forget the filking plague yes the filking <laughs> plague <laughs> we have enough songs from november to make an album mm. which will wow. be available for free at the beginning cool. of april yeah <laughs> that's pretty cool that's cool. I yeah. like that. That's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so you 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 have your OBS. So tell everybody what OBS is, and and for for those who don't know, and and what it, yes. what it does for you in Twitch. In that okay, way. this is something I would have gotten started on Twitch a long time ago if the blogs that explained it had been clearer. But I'm 47. <laughs> you know, I don't I don't just intuitively get this stuff. I have to go mm. figure it out. Okay, so OBS stands for Open Broadcasting Studio. Right. So there are a few different programs that you can use that will do this. What I use is called OBS Live or Stream Elements Live. And I'll uh, perhaps I'll share my screen and mm -hmm. show you guys kind of what it looks like when you're setting up here. Share screen. OK. Yeah, I know it's easiest with two monitors. I don't care. I'm sorry. All right. Um, let's see. There we go. OK. All right, so it's going to show you here for a minute, and then we're going to swip, oh, switch over. Is it showing my... Not yet. No. no, it's not. Okay, did I... 
let's see, share. Oh no, I have to select it. Okay, there we go. Now, yes. there we go. Okay, so this is the setup that I do for my um, my uh, writing sprint stream. I call it Diane Actually Writes. I started doing this as part of Diane Writes, which happens on Wednesday mornings. But I also said, um, you know, I'll answer questions about writing and I'll do critiques and feedback. And so I almost never get any writing done. So I had to make more shows to get writing done and say no critique on these shows. Right. So this is <laughs> the setup for that one, which runs on Tuesday nights. Um, here you have um, these down here. I don't know how well you can see them, but there's this is where all your scenes are. Right. This is my starting scene setup. And if, I don't know why it's not loading. OK, because it's slow. But I mean, this all looks very complicated, but it's actually really not. This is a graphic that I made in Canva, which a lot of people will be familiar with. The thing that says Diane actually writes. Most of these are just graphics that I added. This is a. Uh, um, a folder here that just files through my books so that, you know, people know what I've written and if something interests them. This is something called a browser source, and so is this frame bit. You get those. This one comes directly from Twitch. I'm currently trying to uh, build up a thousand followers. So when I get a thousand followers, I will do a 12 hour charity stream. And so that's the goal. And it lets you change your goals. It's something they added recently. Most people were kind of doing it on their own. The rest of this stuff comes from a place called Stream Elements. And they've got like preset um, kind of frames and themes that you can use. You edit them on the site and then you can add them to your streams. And I will show you that in a minute. All the stuff that you add to the stream is here, sources. They are either like this background stars bit is a video that just loops. Um, I flip through a couple of different banners depending on which show I'm doing for this setup. Um, yeah, let's see. That graphic there is for being part of the Anvilite Streamer Core, which is a group of people who stream World Anvil content. And I've got the World Anvil logo there. Um, you know, some other brand stuff. You, you, yeah, have you get to the, add nano, you get the Nano Rymo badge there. So. I do. I do. Yeah. And this is my symbol of my house in the game of tomes. I am the leader of House <laughs> Lapin. Our motto is ideas are coming. Because <laughs> we're all about the property. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 It's ridiculous. This here is our graphic for the Turdy of Tales. If you blow it up, it has like, hear ye, hear ye, by declaration of the houses and in celebration of future worlds to be writ, a Turdy of Tales will be held from the first through final day of the month of April in the year of our words, 2022. You know, and then we've got, you know, the different major house symbols that are competing. So, yeah. Do you it's have to be recruited to a house or can you just join? How do you You can just involved? join. How how do you jo you join? You just uh, decide what house you're writing for, and use that channel point reward to report your words the first time you decide you want to report your word count, and then you're in that house. Nice. Um, during the turdy, you can't change houses once you've chosen it. In the game of tomes in November, you can betray your house anytime you want. Technically, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. If you if you if you get eliminated or die in 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 the that aspect, can you re, re resurrect yourself to another house? Oh, how it works is that um, every five days, one house is eliminated, the one with the lowest word count. Yeah. Uh. One third of them are randomly drafted with a name picker into the <laughs> undead horde. And you must therefore write for the horde for the remainder of the competition. The other two thirds can pick another house to represent. And that happens cool. until there's one house in the undead horde. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, these are your audio mixer stuff here. This works like any other broadcast thing. You can mm -hmm. see that my mic that I use is active and registering my voice mm -hmm. here, right? This video has a soundtrack that I mute. Mm -hmm. That's my, uh, my headset microphone is available and it's picking up my voice, but I've chosen to mute it because I'm using another microphone, but I keep it active just in case anyway. Right? And then over here um, are the buttons that make it all work. They'll be in different places depending mm -hmm. upon which system or service you use, mm -hmm. but they'll be generally like that. There's the start streaming button. It's nice and big and green, right? <laughs> uh, when you when you press it, if you hover over it to um, afterwards, it'll turn red to say stop streaming. Right. And then you know, um, I'm not going to get into virtual cameras right now. You can set it up so that you can use an avatar that kind of follows your movements and reacts mm -hmm. when you react or you can set up a background that is not like the background around you, but this is a one-on-one. We don't really mm -hmm. need that right now. Um, this is the start recording button. OBS also makes a convenient video and audio recorder, which I am now using to do a bunch of uh, music stuff. So nice. that's pretty handy. You know, buttons for settings here and exit. This here is the stream information, which I have to change anyway. This is the title that will appear underneath your stream when you start. Mm -hmm. And the next one I'm going to do. Oh, no, actually, it was the right one. Oh, well, okay. So you can see how it goes. <laughs> um, Aaron is streaming a show called Ask an Old GM. Aaron's my husband. He mm -hmm. also streams on the channel. Um, he is um, a game master who's been playing for like 40 years and offers RPG and gaming advice or and game mastering advice actually is there is there a limit to the characters on on the title yes. that you see? 140 characters is the limit mm -hmm. um but you'll almost never need that right? yeah. this stuff that's at the end here is stuff that these are commands that you can run in my chat one thing you might want to do is install a chat bot. Popular ones include um, Streamlabs. That's probably the most popular one. I mm -hmm. use something called Moobot, right? There's a bunch of stuff like that. And that way, if someone types in exclamation point and a certain word, which you've preset, it'll give them a certain amount of information. Like I've got one that says um, exclamation point books, right? And this will tell you where to find my books. <laughs> there you go and you can see it in my chat there yeah. Oh, yeah um so okay let's see what was i um yes that's what i needed to put there right so when you're done that the thing you're going to want to pay attention to when you start streaming is the category and the tags now there's no official writing category but a lot of people are taking over like there, there was something called creative now yeah. they've decided it's art and yeah. we're trying to get creative writing, but they haven't done it yet. There's a petition. You can go sign it. If you join the Twitch Writers Network, they'll tell you where to find it. But in the meantime, we're taking over something that's actually a game called Writers. That's what I usually stream under when I'm doing writing streams. But this is Aaron's, so I'm going to change it back to tabletop RPGs because that's what he does. <laughs> right. And then down here, you'll have the tags. And these are some of the more common ones writing, mm -hmm. editing, campaign planning, world building, and sometimes co working. And, but I, I use AMA for that particular show. And these mm -hmm. are, these are ways that people will find you, right? Like if you, mm -hmm. if you stream the writing tag, the, the, um, the Twitch Writers Network will find you. So this here is your activity feed. This will tell you stuff like when people spend channel points, that's what all this stuff is. Reroll, mm -hmm. reroll, that's channel points to make us reroll in our role-playing <laughs> game that we were doing. This is a follow. So we have a new follower, yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> this is spending towards a community challenge. A community challenge is when multiple people contribute multiple channel points towards a larger goal. In this mm -hmm. case, it's the live reading of my novel. 
And so people can contribute up to 2000 points every time that they log into your stream. This is a subscription here. Subscriptions don't, okay, so yeah, terminology. For those of you who are familiar with YouTube, you will know a subscription as what Twitch calls a follow. Basically, we sign up to be notified about when you go live and what you're doing. Yep. But you can also subscribe, which um, it's a monthly fee. It's kind of like a, a Patreon in that, you, and you can sign up for different levels and they'll give you different benefits. But this contributes money directly towards the streamer. They get about 50% of the profit. Twitch gets 50% of the profit. So, um, yeah, I have a little over 30 subscribers right now. So it's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Nice. I think I, I've done what I can think of to explain about this at the moment. So mm -hmm. if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Mm -hmm. I, the the uh, re-roll seems to be a popular thing for... <laughs> that kind of sucks. <laughs> oh, no, that's cool. We, we have this uh, rule in the role-playing... We're still running that role-playing game that we started doing at the beginning of the pandemic. It's still going. Everybody's, like, level 12 now. But, yeah, it's still a thing. And we started from two, I think. But, uh... um, but um, twice on any given action... It, it, the audience can re-roll if they want mm -hmm. to either uh, for or against the characters so <laughs> you know oh no we didn't want you to get that tie of a roll you can re-roll and see if the monster eats you yeah it's, yeah. it's fun <laughs> i'm curious from the perspective of so this is where you do your write-ins this is where you do your amas and things like that where do you do you use obs to stream your gaming sources as well when you're doing live gaming or do yes. you do that directly on the game console itself no i i uh, i don't do video game streams myself just the rpgs mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so i'll show you what one of those looks like this is our campaign um oh i'm just going to show you my opening video we don't we don't need that right now no 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 that's <laughs> not what i want okay there we go this is what it, it uh, my setup typically looks like and behind right. here i have a zoom window other people will use uh, tabletop, uh, virtual tabletops like, right. um, oh, let's see, like Roll20, for example, mm -hmm. and they'll capture video that way. I found that kind of a pain to deal with, and I don't use the maps because this is a campaign that takes place in space. For the most part, it's like magic sailing ships that go, that travel through space like Treasure Planet. So... Um, I found that even if I were inclined to set up battle maps in advance, the characters would probably not stick to them. So mm. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> and if someone's on camera, you know, I don't put a, a picture of their character in front of it. Sure. But if they're, if they're like, that's what the setup was last time. There were two of us on camera and the rest of us weren't. And yeah, um, it captures the audio from everyone with the main audio and you know, we just we just play the game. We roll our dice. We do our thing, right? I've got this little drum going here because when we left, um, we were in combat, and we're gonna have <laughs> to start again next time in combat because you set a time, right? And that's what you stream for. We and at the end of three hours, we we're still in the fight. So, yeah. So that'll remind people that we are in a fight, right? And then that way, so, yeah. people goof off less in the chat and, tr and are less distracting usually. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so you you said you you're 47. You're behind the curve in terms of the learning curve of the, of the of these systems and things like that. So yeah. How long did it take you to master something like this? It just gives some people some idea if they're starting sure. out. Sure. Sure. Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen mm -hmm. now. Actually. Yeah. Um. Okay. There's there's always little things to learn. Mm -hmm. I'd say it took me about a year before I was really comfortable with everything I'm currently doing. And even so, I'm still defining tricks. Like, I don't know, I watched the official D&D channel and they had like a video lead in for their campaign. And I thought I could do that. And I made <laughs> one. I hadn't thought of it before that. I was like a month ago. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But to get started, it, you really don't need much, right? Um, mm -hmm. the, the basic stuff, um, you can you can have that going. I, I Okay, the first time I streamed, 
Um, I had an echo problem that mm. made it difficult to understand. So um, make sure that it is only capturing one audio source at a time, right? Don't, right. Uh, you know, like don't, uh, don't capture your main audio and your desktop audio at the same time, for example, pick one, mm. right? Um, but yeah, generally that took a couple of streams to get going and then you know you can make it fancier as you go right you don't have to right. start with fancy it can be just you talking on the screen like this or it can be you capturing a uh a window capture and showing mm -hmm. people what you're writing and most of your yeah. most of your overlays and stuff like that you got from canva that you created and everything is that i made a bunch of stuff fair? in canva and mm -hmm. i also use uh stream elements which has some built-in themes. I was going to show you that actually, wasn't mm -hmm. I? I will do that. We will go there. Awesome. Okay. Let's see here. I'll go back to sharing my screen. Once I get the dashboard up. Okay. All right. Okay, so we're gonna there we go <laughs> infinite you all right but we're gonna go there so this is your stream elements dashboard you got to sign up for an account and link it to you can link it to both your twitch and your youtube if you do both right um it shows you things like how many people have hosted you recently um how many subscribers you currently have oh i see people haven't renewed yet okay <laughs> um, oh, no, that's gain in fall in subscribers. Mm. Pardon me. So gain in subscribers, gain in followers over the past like 30 days, you know, number of raids, number of bits, people throw to you bits are, I, I think one bit is worth like one cent or something mm -hmm. like that. But they, if people, you can do that and it gives money to the streamer. It's like a tip, mm -hmm. right? Um, the key thing that you're going to want here is, um, streaming tools, overlays gallery <clears throat> this is going to show you a bunch of different themed overlays and actually their like sample thing here mm -hmm. is a good example and you can use these to build streams around right so you could do yours all up in neon and kind of an 80s look you could do it based on halo if that's something you're into you know, you set something up specifically for live music. They got, they got a bunch of different stuff. And this is pre-created themes that you don't have to be like a graphic artist to create, right? And then yeah. you, you can choose to use all of it or some of it or none of it or bits of it. Like, I don't necessarily use the whole theme for mm -hmm. some of the overlays I do. I'm trying to find one of the ones. Well, I, actually, I can show you that in yeah. the ones that I've saved in my overlays. So these are the stuff that I've actually saved to use, mm -hmm. right? Um, this is a particular theme that they have. And in some of these, I use this for two shows. I use it for Sable's World Forge, which is a world building show that I do on Sunday mornings. And I use it for the Game of Tomes stuff generally because it's fiery and all that stuff. But I don't use the background that comes with it. And I don't use um, some of the windows and whatnot. I'll open up. What do I want to? Where is the original one here? I'll show you what it'll look like. Um, I don't know because I've this is this is the version I've saved now. Right, right? sure, so, yeah, yeah, and you've um, you've manipulated it enough to. Yeah, for, for I've done purpose. things. I've done yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is an example of a starting screen that I've got, mm -hmm. and you could, you know, you can this element here. I'm not using the text on it. Mm -hmm. That's why it's kind of grayed out, but mm -hmm. I am using this border thing and I'm, I'm you know, it's kind of what I'm doing. I put on there, but I put, use that in my uh, OBS setup and mm -hmm. I use their text function there, right? I use a different background, but it came with the background that you could have used if you wanted. I just like mine better. 
you know, I liked this starting um, this text here, the flaming text, and this shows all my social stuff there. This is things like recent followers and tips and donations mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's a chat window. The chat um, conversation will appear in there. This is a timer, 10 minute timer. And, you know, then theoretically I will start. The reason why people often do timers when they're setting up is because it takes a moment for the bots that do the announcing, like if you're following the channel, mm -hmm. to inform people that you are online. So it usually is a good idea to wait a few minutes before you actually get started on whatever you're doing because it gives the audience a chance to gather and then mm -hmm. they don't miss anything. Right, so it's why I, it's why I had that little bit at the beginning of my intro for the 30 seconds. It's the same thing with YouTube. YouTube does the same delay and has a it's a little bit a little bit uh, less than on YouTube, but same idea. So exactly. Now, if you want to edit this stuff, right? Say I want to edit the countdown here. Mm -hmm. So I'd click on that, and then down here you'll see settings will appear and position and style and stuff like that. So this will, you can choose to have a countdown to an exact time, mm -hmm. right? Which is what I've done or to a specific date, like um, in, in the game of tones setup, which I'll be running a stream for tonight on the official game of tones channel. It's got a countdown to when our tourney of tales event starts. So I could put that in there and that would appear in the section, or I could make this invisible if I wanted mm -hmm. by going to uh, back to the layers. Right. And I could mm -hmm. just hit this little eye here and that makes it disappear. <laughs> right. and, and the same thing works in your OBS. You'll have these yeah. eye things and you'll have these little locks. Mm -hmm. If it's locked, you can't move it which is handy because you won't end up accidentally moving things off your screen and going, where did that go? So you should probably lock it unless you're actively editing it, but then you can unlock it when you do want to edit it and move it around. Right. I'm not going to do that right now though. <laughs> I don't want to look. Yeah. I love, I love how it boxes the, the idea too, so that you know where it's going to appear on the stream. That's kind of, uh, the, yeah. the one thing with Canva that always drove me crazy was trying to figure out exactly where to place something in there without using, because uh, I don't like to, uh, templates are fine and they're, they're a great starter, but I like to move stuff around and play with stuff too. And so with Canva, it's a lot harder to figure out if it's going to actually appear on the screen or not. So I like this idea that you can box it enough that you have those boxes where it's going to show you where it appears on the screen kind of idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree completely. I find that very mm -hmm. helpful. Mm -hmm. I think I can stop sharing that screen now. <laughs> yeah. So so I, I do have a question for my own personal um, idea. And this is something that I struggle with uh, in terms of because when you're sharing your links and you're putting yourself out there, to Twitch doesn't establish an actual link to the stream that you're actually streaming, just the, the general stream until it starts. And you have right. to, you just give your Twitch channel and just go, Hey, subscribe or, or, or follow and do that. And then uh, the, with my setup here, and I'm in for anybody who doesn't know we're we're, we're in StreamYard right now working from that. And, and I can usually do everything ahead of time, like all my information that I'm going to put in the description, but with Twitch, I can't do that. So I go back to it and I'll show you my screen here a little bit. This is, these are all our shows here. And what I end up doing is I end up going into the show. I'm not, this is just a screenshot, but I end up going into the actual show and then putting the description in after the show's aired or during the, you can't even do it during, you have to do it after. But, right. uh, but so how much of that, do you think matters in terms of people finding you ultimately? Do you think that, I mean, that's where I put the hashtags and things like that. Should, should, should you look to, to, to put that stuff in first? Or do you think that that doesn't matter? Because I mean, Twitch is built on live streaming, but I do get a lot of people who come back and watch it after the fact too. So, right. so I, I'm just curious from your perspective because you do everything live do you feel like there's there's a residual effect for people coming back afterwards? And, and oh, how, yeah. do you treat, how do you treat those folks as opposed to the people you do live? You know, 
it's it's interesting like not everybody wants to interact with you live they don't feel comfortable yeah. necessarily engaging and having a record of their engagement being on a live broadcast right mm -hmm. I, I actually do get quite a lot of views of the VODs I typically get somewhere between 80 and 90 views of any writing stream that I do after the mm -hmm. fact and I get about 60 which is weird views. because that are, those are write in so you're yeah. writing with you <laughs> I know I don't I don't really I mean yeah and it doesn't matter either it doesn't it, that's there's because you're right there's no difference between diane writes where i do critique and feedback and diane actually writes where i'm writing for 15 minutes taking a five minute break and then writing for 15 minutes and chatting with people in that five minute break no there's no difference it gets about the same numbers i i don't really i don't know but i guess people find it comforting mm -hmm. i think i sort of have a mom vibe i'm cool <laughs> with that i'm cool with it well i'm 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 I mean, I Twitch is still a lot of younger people, <laughs> yeah. right? So I'm yeah. actually one of the older people out here, and I'm good with that. I can be everybody's mm. internet mom. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. Hey, whatever gets you seen, right? So that's, that's right. That's... <laughs> but yeah, so, I... yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, for for, I think it's in the the categories can be like the tags and the categories can be really important. Do you not set this up in your stream manager beforehand? Uh, I didn't know I could do that, actually. I will show you then. You. This will okay, be helpful yeah. to you, and yeah. it will be helpful to everybody else. Okay. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, so Twitch has a built-in thing called Stream Manager, right? When you are on Twitch, let's see. I, I should have had your show live, but okay. Um, when you are on Twitch, you will have this little icon here in the far right corner that when you fire it up, we'll show you a bunch of things, right? And channel, it'll take you to your channel. And account settings, it'll take you into this area. Once you're here, you can uh, select different options. The one you want is Stream Manager. All right, and this basically, you'll see, it looks a little bit like that OBS window that I showed mm -hmm. you earlier. Yep. This is where you can do all that stuff without OBS, right? Like this is what you would use if you were using Twitch Studio for the most part. Notice again, it's just different places, right? We've mm -hmm. got the uh, activity feed up here and the chat down here and the stream information is you edit it with this window. You click on that and you oh, can set cool. that all up beforehand before you go live, mm -hmm. right? So, and then just- I didn't if know you you're could live, do that. <laughs> this will show you what what you're streaming, right? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah you That's bet. Cool. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, Thank you we'll for get showing into, that. Yeah, no worries. We'll get into stuff like viewer rewards and things like that, and uh, insights and affiliate stuff, like in a two hundred one maybe because mm. we, you know, I mean, if you're just getting started, it's, it's not going to matter, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that's uh, yeah, that's. Right. Yeah, that, that makes sense. But uh, yeah, that's so uh, E. Armstrong says, so, yeah, I personally find most of the people I watch through the tags and categories, the rest are through shoutouts. So do you spend a, do you you spend a good amount of time setting things up so that it can be seen after the fact for, for the most part? I do try to do it in advance. Like I, I tend to know when I have regular times that I stream and I rarely go outside of those times. Um, if If you're trying to build an audience, right? some advice one thing is stream at regular times treat mm -hmm. it like a job don't act like it's a job right mm -hmm. as in show up when you say you're going to show up it's even okay if you show up a little late i'm routinely late everybody knows <laughs> it they think i'm funny <laughs> but you know if you say you're going to stream on tuesday night at five o'clock try to be, be there, there by 5 15 at the latest you know right mm -hmm. just don't don't just ignore the stream and not do it you know and um yeah, regular stream, exactly, Eli. Eli Quake is also, like I said, a writing streamer mm -hmm. and a friend of mine. And uh, yeah, you, you got to do it on a regular basis. It helps if you put it in your about information mm -hmm. on your Twitch page. They'll have a place where you can edit your schedule. Put it in there if it's regular so that people can see that you're going to be live at certain times. Exactly. Uh, e. Armstrong here, consistency is key. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, yeah. the other another thing that's important is don't do shorter streams. You'll do better if you do two to three hours at a time. 
which is the complete opposite of what everybody tells you to do. Well, yeah, but you're right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it it really is better to do that because it gives people time to do things like one of the ways in which people find each other is through something called a raid. And this allows you to send other people to someone else's channel, your audience, when you're done streaming, you can go, hey, go check this person out. I'm going to send you over there. And um, it's simple. It's slash raid. And the name of the channel, like if I were raiding you, I would type in mm. slash raid go indie now. Mm. And then it gives me a little countdown and then I hit a button and it sends everybody over to where you are. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, if you build... but it broadcasts from where you are, right. It doesn't, it sends, it sends them to me, but you're, you're actually on your, still on your screen, right? Oh no, that's a host. That's different. Oh, okay. <clears throat> if you're hosting Which... someone like yeah. I, if you raid someone, if I were to raid you, it would automatically host you on my channel as well. So that right. means if somebody came after I'd gone offline and you're still streaming and I'd raided into your channel, that's they what would I see meant. You. Sorry. Yeah. 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 And yeah. and then they would have to, but but if they're raiding, if they're coming from the end of my live broadcast, they'll just drop into your channel. Yeah. Right. So and that's a really great way that people use to um, you know, shout out other people that they support. So collaboration is also really important. It's important to go visit other streams of people that you like. If you raid them, they'll remember and they'll probably raid you. This can mm -hmm. be really helpful if somebody really big like Kate Cavanaugh writes decides that they're going to come and raid your stream. You can pick up a lot of followers that way. So collaborate, be nice. Right. I don't see, collaboration yeah. and the more reaching out and help you do for other people, like in anything, they'll help you out. Right. Yeah, for sure. And so to talk a little bit about when you're not the, the hosting aspect, when you're not on live, how much does has that helped you hosting other channels? Because uh, what what they do, because they treat it kind of like a television in that. It's always on twenty four. You could always have it on twenty four seven. Do you do you find that's more effective than just leaving the last stream you had on, or do you feel like that that's an okay approach as well? Because what it, what Twitch will do is if you stream whatever you stream and you're not online, it'll have that last stream as the big window for everybody to watch the the late stream that you did, or it will have whatever channel, if another channel you're hosting is live, that'll have that stream going on your channel as well. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're saying mm -hmm. because Twitch will automatically uh, start playing silently the last stream. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> yeah. Um, it'll start uh, It'll start playing the last stream you did silently, and then people mm -hmm. might go click on it and check it out. Or right. it will host somebody that you said for it to host. I I personally, uh, I like hosting other people. I don't know what anybody else does. I have an auto host list. You can also establish that. So if yep. somebody is streaming, it'll automatically host on your channel. You can make a list of those. I do that with the Game of Tones streamers generally, especially the major house leaders and organizers, right? I do that with the Conduit people. Um, I do that with World Anvil and Tail Foundry, who are both people who have been very supportive to me. And... Yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly think that uh, reaching out and collaboration is always more effective in the Twitch community than anything that would be selfishly motivated, really. Yeah, I did. That's the actually that is the first thing on Twitch that I discovered was the auto host and host elements. And that's, that's very, very easy to set up and, and put together. And I agree with you. I think that you doing that is 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 something that uh, will fostered the community more than anything yeah vanessa was real she was just talking about that this morning with us but yeah awesome <laughs> we have a new tome night excellent <laughs> what house are you in vanessa let's let's put that out because everybody <laughs> everybody earlier was declaring their house so you know oh sure awesome that, good to yeah. know people are excited that's great yeah i'm well, very I'm, excited too <laughs> i've been filking i have a new filk <laughs> Ooh, nice yeah. nice so it's not just words that count then. Well, is that so any you... creative writing whatsoever at all for mm -hmm. game of tomes, novels, <laughs> stories, um, one shot adventures, lyrics, um, screenwriting, whatever you want. 
Yeah. <laughs> awesome shy. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, Vanessa's been approved as streamer for Game of Tones. Yeah. It's, nice. Awesome. Yeah, come and play with us, right? Honestly, we, we love our game. And come do Conduit with us. We're There's a few of us who are really eager to try to help out people getting started. Yeah. You can talk to me. You can talk to Eli. Eli's been very helpful to new streamers as well. That's uh, twitch.tv slash Eli Quake, E-L-I-K-W-A-K-E. Right? You see his um, name right there. Yep. Nope. Yep good friend of mine awesome right awesome person so <laughs> leader of house incendium too which is one of the minor houses which is i'm not gonna get into that right now but <laughs> minor houses serve a major house to compete it's all works, uh, right? nice. nice but um yeah. yeah um and also coffee quills is another person who is traditionally mm -hmm. very helpful one of my co-conspirators in the game of tomes and the person who is in charge of the chaos that is writers conduit um and that's just like it sounds uh, TV twitch.tv slash coffee quills no capitals no spaces uh, yeah. we've got about five minutes and uh, don't have any questions uh, per se but so talk a little bit about the connection between the writer community in twitch and discord and how effective that's been too because that's that's a, that's an element of twitch that has really come alive is the discord and people use them in tandem to kind of it, discord seems to be like the message board of twitch right it and is then, you know yeah thank you for bringing that up actually joe mm -hmm. that's very important if you're going to get involved in twitch you need to go join discord because that is how you end up you know reaching out to and talking to people if you're an indie and you already have a patreon right then um it, it's simple enough because they've got to start a server and give your patrons benefits thing integrated which is mm -hmm. how i got onto discord in the first place um i have a fairly large community there now it's called sables privateers it's um it, it, you know what well I'll, let me let me drop an invite to your audience yeah. here right um we have at least 200 yeah i don't even think now. i'm on your i don't think i'm on your yours either so. i don't think you are actually yeah we're, we're watching, in like you a direct invitation uh, right? we're, we're in like like four or five of them together but that was it's yeah, kind of weird I'm that not, i'm not in yours that's true yeah there's a link to join my discord if you want there's uh lots of people on there who are regular uh writing streamers and regular twitch users They'd be happy to help you get set up. We have independent writers. We have uh, unpublished writers yet who are working on it. And those are reducing. We're helping them. So that's really, that's something that makes me very happy. There's been a few people who were not published when they joined our community who are now. And uh, yeah, like it's it's a great bunch. Yes, thank there. you. I'm in. Writing Tribe. The Writing Tribe also has a Discord. It's a very popular Discord server as well. And uh, Writer's Conduit has a Discord, which I will also drop a link for. Cause... Yeah, that's a that's an important one, too, because that's where everybody schedules everybody and brings everybody in and, and does exactly. all those things. And we talk we talk uh, privately to, to get everybody together to, to make sure that all those things are together. Um, you know, I I'm going in now as a Discord too, but I've completely ignored it. So don't don't, hmm. don't go there and sign up. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, I like the Discord Twitch network. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. You know what? I should drop theirs too. Twitch Writers a, Network also has. Great... They have like five hundred people on theirs now. They've been around mm -hmm. a lot longer than everybody yeah. else. They're kind of like the OG. They're the goat, right? So yeah. <laughs> And you can find them there. All right. Yeah. yeah. Bunch of people happy to help you out. You know, you got questions. We're happy to answer them to the best of our ability. There's people who a lot know a lot more about the tech than I do that will uh, <laughs> give you better information. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, this has been fantastic. And Vanessa, um, you, I saw your comment there about, um, uh how to multi multi-stream we actually went over that earlier in the in the, the discussion so go back and watch the beginning of it Did, um diane shows obs and that's basically where you can do something like that and to put it together right uh, to do like to do what we're doing right here to have two people on the stream and like, you, you actually she actually showed us 
uh, a Zoom, which she incorporated Zoom into it as well onto her D&D one. So Discord can... also has an in uh, innate um, like chat video or whatever function like that. You can share the screen there too, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to get Zoom if you don't want to. You can do it through Discord. It works mm -hmm. just fine. Well, yeah. I said I said Zoom for Vanessa because she's very very comfortable with Zoom. So oh, okay. Will. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. You can. Um, there's a trick to capturing Zoom. Uh, when you capture it, just a second here, because mm -hmm. I'll double check my settings. Because some it'll if you don't. Okay. There there's a thing here. I'm. I guess I'll show my screen again. One moment. Mm. Sorry. I realize we're probably gonna go a little over time, but. You gotta see it, so That's fine. it's yeah, important. No problem. Okay, so here we are, right? Um, there's a thing here, capture method. Select, don't select automatic, select Windows 10, 1903 and up. If you do not, then every time you are not actually like selecting the zoom window, it will disappear off your screen mm. or freeze, which is nice a real step. pain in the butt. If you're trying to, you know, share a conversation that people are having, you know, if somebody's face is frozen, frozen in an awkward position. We don't want that. So, is there yeah. is there a way on Streamlabs to to do multiple streamers at a time? I don't think uh, that... Yeah, I'm sure you can do exactly the same thing. All these programs mm -hmm. have this function, mm -hmm. right? So to capture um, a window, it's, it'd be mm -hmm. a window capture or a display capture function. The difference is window captures a single window. Right. Yeah. Display function captures everything, everything. you're currently yeah. looking at. Right. Yeah. I yeah. almost never use it. So, <laughs> yeah, it slows the sh shit down on my computer. If I do like that. <laughs> that so, too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have so. a thousand tabs open. We don't right. like that. <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, uh, this has been awesome. You it's, thank you so yes. much. I'm so glad we got this opportunity to do this. And it's nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a couple of years. So, I know, well, right? Well, we well, actually, we saw each other at Conduit last year, but but you know. We last we saw were, each other in person at uh, yeah, When Words Collide like yeah, three years ago so now great. or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah so it's, it's good really to see nice. you again. <laughs> and thank you for having me on. This was fun. Yeah, absolutely. Tell everybody uh, what you've got going on and uh, where they can find you. Obviously, you mention your Twitch so people can, can do that as well. Sure. And, All right. Yeah. So you can find me at my Twitch channel, obviously, which is twitch.tv slash Sable Aradia. I will put that in the chat here so that you don't, can see you don't need to. It's in the description. So everybody can go and grab oh, brilliant. it. Brilliant. Description here. Mm -hmm. um, my latest novel is A Few Good Elves. It's book one in the Toy Soldier Saga, which is military fantasy space opera. Um, you can find that at Books to Read uh, slash A Few Good Elves. So I'll type that in. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, book two, I'm planning to Kickstarter in probably June and publish in September. And that's kind of going to be my model for things. Incidentally, Twitch is a great platform for getting attention for a Kickstarter. If you're not <laughs> interested in uh, paying not, for. Yeah. If you're not yeah. Brandon Sanderson, right? So. <laughs> yeah. If you, if, exactly. But, but the publishing model works, right? right, right, right. I have, uh, I have made a profit on every book I've published and you know, this is a, a good part of it. So, yeah, yeah, I remember us having that conversation. It was that exact conversation before. We so, yeah. did. <laughs> and let's see. You can find my Toy Soldier Saga World at worldanvil.com slash W slash Toy Soldier Saga. Uh, yeah. Those are probably, and I'm on Twitch at, at uh, or not Twitch, Twitter at, at Sable Aradia. You can probably find me anywhere by typing in Sable Aradia. It's, my um, pagan writing pen name, my first published book was a nonfiction book on witchcraft. So everything it started out under that name and I just kept it for being online. <laughs> <laughs> you do a better hair, Vanessa. That is a fact. <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you so much, everybody. And uh, yeah, remember that. Us, guys. Uh, yeah, it's always time to go indie now. And we'll actually, I want to, I want, I do want to mention next week's tweet. Uh, we will do another triples next week, but it's going to be at noon Eastern tomorrow uh, or on mon next Monday, because uh, the person I'm in, uh, having is 
Karina Cantus, and she's in Greece. So, you know, right. if I did it at this time, it would be three in the morning for her. Yeah, so no. we're going to do it at noon Eastern, uh, a, a special time, and we're going to go over Canva. So everybody cool. who has some idea about Canva, you want to check that out. As she's got a great, uh, she's got a great setup there, and uh, she is my graphics artist now. So she does all my graphics, and uh, she does them through Canva. So we're going to learn a little bit about Canva next week. But uh, thank you to Diane for teaching us Twitch. And yes, it's always Thanks, time to Julie. go any now. We'll see you again soon, everybody. Mm -hmm.